American League champion White Sox, number three, Kyle Mullen. From the National League champion Diamondbacks, number seven, Ryan Manson. From the American League champion White Sox, number four, Danny Weiner. National League champion Diamondbacks, number four, Connor Bailey. From the American League champion White Sox, number 11, Jacob Mullen. From the National League champion Diamondbacks, number 12, Brendan. the American League champion White Sox, number six, Reed Norbert. From the National League champion Diamondbacks, number 10, Kurt Vecchio. From the American League champion White Sox, number five, Nolan Garcia. The National League champion Diamondbacks, number three, Tanner Blake. From the White Sox, number two, Brady Flores. From the National League Diamondbacks, number five, Patrick McLaughlin. American League champion White Sox. Number one, Nick Vidal. From the National League champion Diamondbacks. Number two, Jack Cleary. From the American League White Sox. Number seven, Nicholas Miller. From the National League Diamondbacks. Number one, Thomas Rapp. the White Sox. Number 10, Austin Molinar. From the National League Diamondbacks. Number 6, Connor Babish. From the American League White Sox. Number 12, Ryan Booth. From the National League Diamondbacks. Number 9, Robbie McAllister. Also from the American League White Sox, number nine, Michael Leahy. And also from the American League White Sox, number eight, Nathan Kuyper. Coach for the American League White Sox, Chuck Norber. And for the Diamondbacks, Dusty Madsen. Also coaching for the White Sox, Jeff Booth. And for the Diamondbacks, Robert McLaughlin. And now our managers for the Majors World Series. American League champion White Sox, David Weiner. And for the National League champion Diamondbacks, Dan Bailey. Behind the plate, we have Joe McLaughlin umpiring and Nick Bat on the bases. come out and join us for the National Anthem.
Hello, everybody. Ken Gonzalez here for George Langevin Productions, and we have the Scripps Ranch Little League World Series just ahead of us here. It's the Majors World Series as we see the Diamondbacks, the home team, taking the field first here. First baseman, Connor Bailey. Then your second baseman is Jack Cleaney, number two there. Your shortstop is number 12, Brendan Cleary. And your third baseman, number five, Patrick McLaughlin. There's Patrick. Moving on now to the outfield. In left field, number one, Thomas Graff. He is moving over to center field. Ryan Madsen, number seven. Ryan showing off a good arm there and all the way in right field. Number six, Connor Barbush. Connor looks ready to go. We'll get to the pitcher and the catcher now. Catching. There he is, Tanner Blake, number three. Getting ready at number 10, the pitcher is Kurt Vecchio. So today, the 13th of June, Saturday, 2009. 12 30 game time here at Jerebeck Park. Now batting for the American League White Sox. So, first batter of the World Series here for the White Sox is Kyle Mullen. Kyle, the catcher for the White Sox. And he'll take the strike, and the count is 0-1. So, 0-1. Vecchio's next pitch is low. He evens the count, one ball, one strike. So just the start of things, Kyle Mullen, the first batter of the game, left-handed batter. And the 1-1 pitch in the dirt, 2-1. 2 one pitch is swung on and fouled down the left field line as he went the other way with it. And the count, 2-2, two and two, Kyle Mullen. Q2 pitch fouled away again. So he's staying, staying in there, battling away, trying to get some pitches here. So his teammates can uh, get a good look at Vecchio, the pitcher. And the 2 2 pitch is popped up, foul territory here down the left field line and out of play. Patrick McLaughlin. Went over to take a look, but he ran out of room. Ball behind the dugout, and so the count remains two and two. And the two-two pitch. And waiting, and it's low and away. So we've gone full here on the first batter of the game, Kyle Mullen. And the count is three and two. Vecchio rocks, deals, and the 3 2 pitch is grounded off Vecchio's leg to the shortstop. And the throw to first is not going to be in time. So Brendan Cleary, the shortstop for the Diamondbacks, was able to come up with that ball. And so on first base is Kyle Mullen, and now Danny Weiner. The second baseman for the White Sox. Will stand in, right hand batter, first pitches up around the ears. And the count 1 0. Oh. And the 1 0 oh pitch is driven to right field and foul. Down the right field line. And the count 1 and 1.
Vecchio set Dan the 1-1 one -one pitch. He is inside, 2-1. And, Several years we've been out here at Jerebeck Park. Last couple have been uh, a little cloudy like this one here. Very nice weather. And that pitch is grounded to Cleary. Shortstop over to the second baseman for one. Back to first. Not in time. Nice job by the second baseman, Jack Cleaney. As he made the turn there and fired it to first base. That was a good-looking double play. Attempt, I should say. So one away. Mullen is forced out. And that'll bring up Jacob Mullen. Jacob, the shortstop for the White Sox. He'll take the first pitch high, 1-0. So one on, one out, top of the first inning, the 2009 Majors World Series, Scripps Ranch Little League. And Jacob will take that pitch low, and the ball is 2-0. On deck is Reed Norberg. And that pitch on the outside corner. And puts the count at two and one. Actually, we'll have to wait and see once the White Sox get out into the field who the catcher and who the first baseman is. Outside gets away from the catcher. And over to second base goes Danny Weiner. On the pass ball. Weiner now in scoring position. And that pitch is in there. And should make the count two and two on Mullen. Vecchio works quickly. The 2 2 pitch grounded at third. Checks the runner at second. Over to first in time. And on the play, Weiner will take third. So Patrick McLaughlin with a nice play there, comes up with the ball. So Reed Norberg, number six, steps in with two outs. And the first pitch is grounded underneath McLaughlin's glove. Picked up by the shortstop. Brendan Cleary makes a great play. And that'll do it as he throws him out. So at the end of half an inning, no score. All right, so the White Sox defensively here. First baseman, number three, is Kyle Mullen, so that means Reed Nordberg is the catcher. There's number 11, Jacob Mullen, the shortstop. Number 10, Austin Molinar, the third baseman. Danny Weiner is number four at second base. A left field, number one, Nick Fennell. And moving over to center field, Brady Warren, number two. There's Brady, and he's playing catch with the right fielder, Nicholas Miller. There's Miller. And the catcher. And that should be Reed Norberg there, number six. And pitching number five is Nolan Garcia. So the White Sox fail to score. They strand a runner at third base in the top of the first. And Ryan Madsen, first pitch swing, grounds it over to the third baseman, fires it across the diamond, not in time. So Austin Molinar made a nice play on the ball, picked it up nicely, fired across. But as we saw there, Ryan Madsen with some speed.
And that'll bring up Connor Bailey. So Nolan Garcia will work out of the stretch. And that pitch is swung on, hit into the air, deep to right field, over the head of the right fielder, Connor Barbush, and bounces over the wall, so that'll be a ground rule double. So over to third base will go Madsen, and on second base now is Connor Bailey. So that ball, about eye high, was taken the other way. And here's Brendan Cleary, the shortstop, with runners at second and third, nobody out. Here in the bottom of the first inning, he'll take that pitch high and away, 1-0. and So let's see if Garcia can bounce back here. Next pitch high, 2-0. So the White Sox threatened in the top half with a runner at third. All fouled away. And here in the top of the first, D-backs with nobody out. Runners at second and third. All right, curveball there, stayed up. And the count two and one. So Cleary, the shortstop, made a couple of nice plays in the top of the first inning. And another breaking ball looks behind to be Cleary's back, and it was three and one the count, and so that is ball four. So the bases are loaded. And the pitcher, batting cleanup, Kurt Vecchio will stand in. With the bases loaded, nobody out, so he can help himself here. With a couple of runs. And the first pitch to Vecchio. He checked his swing, they appealed. I think they said he did, so it's 0 1. A one pitch in the dirt bounces to the backstop and right back to Norberg, the catcher. So the runners stay put. And now Garcia will battle Vecchio. It's just outside. Ball a bit high. Garcia slowing things down a bit. Now the pitch fires away and ball right down the middle of the plate. So he comes back, gets two strikes on the batter. So Vecchio here, he's got to protect. He put the ball in play and make something happen here. Of course, Garcia looking for a strikeout or a ground out. And that pitch is high. And so Vecchio will walk. And that'll bring in a run as Madsen will score. Connor Bailey to third, Cleary to second. Still nobody out here in the first inning. And it's one nothing Diamondback. Number three, Tanner Blake. And that'll bring up the catcher for the Diamondbacks, Tanner Blake. And Garcia comes right back. He knows there's nowhere to put him. Fires a strike right down the middle, 0-1-1. One pitch, Blake tried to duck under it, but he 
Balls in for a strike and the count 0 and 2. Garcia's 0-2 pitch, curveball again, smacked on the ground towards short. Nobody's going to get it. Finally picked up by Jacob Mullen. But a run will score. Infield single for Tanner Blake. Bailey will score. Brendan Cleary to third. Vecchio to second. Still nobody out. Two runs across. And that'll bring up the third baseman, Patrick McLaughlin. So a nice pitch, 0-2, looked to be a curveball on the outside corner, and Tanner Blake got a bat on it, grounded it slowly to short, nobody could get him, and now a strike on the outside corner. Garcia, although he's in trouble here, last couple of batters has gone right at him and has found the strike zone, that pitch high, 1-1. One and one. He's got nowhere to put anybody, so he's got no choice but to go right at him. And that curveball was a nice pitch. I don't think it was intended to be even swung at. Blake made contact. Swung on and missed. Nice pitch. Look like he... About to take it something off, and Garcia here. You know, for a player this age, he's got some pitches in his repertoire. He's got a fastball, a change, curve. Look to watch Vecchio a little more closely to see what he's got. It's next pitch was low. My mistake in assuming, you know, that this age are just kind of throwing strikes out there. So now we'll see what Vecchio can bring in the top of the second. Very noticeable that Nolan Garcia is mixing things up. And that pitch is high. And so Patrick McLaughlin with the walk. Another run will score. Cleary will come in. Vecchio moves over to third base. Blake at second. And Jack Cleaney. Second baseman will come out. And they... Coach David Weiner for the White Sox will come out and chat to his pitcher. Now batting for the Diamondbacks, number two, Jack Cleary. Pitch is outside, ball one. Thomas Graff would be next. And then Connor Barbush. And would be, unless we see a triple play here. Graff will bat. 3 nothing Diamondback swing and a miss. And the count one and one. So 3 nothing Diamondbacks over the White Sox. Bottom of the first. 2009 Scripps Ranch Little League World Series Majors Division. And that ball is grounded over to third base. They're going to go to the plate, and it's going to be in time. So they get the force. Nice play by the third baseman, Austin Molinar. So they get Vecchio at the plate. Blake over to third, McLaughlin to second. We need a first. So one out. And here's Thomas Graff. So now with that very important first out, the White Sox can make some stuff happen defensively here, and, you know, you can get out of the inning with one swing of the bat. Swung on, grounded is short on a big hop, second for one, he's out there. So a nice play by the shortstop Jacob, Jacob Mullen. 
over to the second baseman, Danny Weiner. And they force out number two. Got Cleaney. A run scores. Four nothing. But there are two outs. Now batting for the Diamondbacks, number six, Connor Babish. Connor Babish there. Trying to drive in another run. Swing and a miss. He's going for the fence there. We give a little credit there to Nolan Garcia. He's battling back here. And really, only one ball has, has left the infield here. The leadoff. Actually, the Connor Bailey, batter number two of the inning with that ground rule double. He hit deep to right field. Everything else on the infield. And Garcia's pitch on the outside quarter. So he's got two strikes now on Connor. And a chance to get out of the inning. Four runs have scored. And outside for a ball. So the bases are loaded. And that'll bring up Ryan Madsen. So Madsen led off the inning. And now he's up again. Ten men to the plate for the Diamondbacks. And first pitch swing flies it down the first baseline. And right there, the first baseman backs up. Makes the play Kyle Mullen. So four runs for the D-backs in the bottom of the first. We go to the second. Four nothing Diamondbacks over the White Sox. So leading off the second inning, number five, the pitcher, Nolan Garcia against Kurt Vecchio. Vecchio with a fastball down the middle, and that stroke to center field on a hop, played by number seven, Ryan Madsen. So a leadoff single for Garcia, a little upset with, the, with his pitching there in the bottom of the first and takes it out on that ball there. And here's Brady Warren. The center fielder for the White Sox. And that pitch is flied into left field, coming over. Oh, he can't make the play. Thomas Graff goes to second in time to get Garcia. And really, you know, there's not much you could do there because Garcia and just about everybody else is going to assume that that ball is caught. And you don't want to get doubled off first. So Nick Fennell now, and he'll bounce one over to the first baseman and taking it himself, Connor Bailey. Over to second base goes Brady Warren. And there are two outs. And so Nicholas Miller for the White Sox will step in. 
White Sox really hitting the ball hard. Big swing and a miss, 0-1. Garcia really lined that first pitch of the inning in the center field for a single, and then that fly ball by Warren. And Fennell bounced very sharply to first base, so let's see what Nicholas Miller does here, 0-2. Goes Miller, the right fielder. Looks like a ball player. High, one and two. And the one two pitch foul back. So, Vecchio, of course, you got a four run lead. Why not just go after everybody? All right, so Vecchia will climb up the back of the mound. Looking for his sign and go right after Miller. Here's the pitch. And that's going to be bounced right back to Vecchio. Goes to first in time. And that'll do it for the White Sox here in the top of the second inning. Kings Oz for George Langevin Productions. Scripps Ranch Little League World Series, the Majors Division. It's 4 nothing. Diamondbacks over the White Sox as we head to the bottom of the second. So leading off the second inning for the Diamondbacks, Connor Bailey, the first baseman. And the pitch comes in, but the umpire wasn't quite ready. and He wasn't even behind the catcher, so no pitch. So Garcia, a little anxious to get started and, you know, see what he can do. And first pitch swing popped up. And the first baseman backs up a few steps. Kyle Mullen. A little smile on his face there. Made the play in fair territory. So one away. And Brendan Cleary. And first pitch swing, grounds to the shortstop, picked up there by Jacob Mullen, across the diamond. And Kyle Mullen in time. So Mullen to Mullen. And there are two away quickly here. And that'll bring up the pitcher, Kurt Vecchio. And Nolan Garcia really needed this. He threw a lot of pitches in that first inning. And so far, I think that's the fourth pitch he's thrown here in the bottom of the second. That includes the first one that didn't count. Garcia's pitch tries for that deuce again and bounces it in the dirt. I think pitchers hate that when they make a pitch and then the very, the very next person to touch the ball after it bounces in the backstop. And that pitch is bounced over to first base. Mullen to the bag. So a nice job by the White Sox defense as they come back, stop the bleeding. We head to the third. It is Diamondbacks four, White Sox nothing. Now batting for the White Sox, number 10, Austin Molina. So number 10, Austin Molinar, the third baseman for the White Sox, will stand in. And see if he can get his team going. First pitch swinging down the right field line. Foul. 
0-1 pitch. High and inside. 1-1. One and one. So, Jared McPark, you look at the, the foliage around. Very green, very wet looking. Especially when it's overcast here. Looks like uh, a park out of North Carolina. Somewhere on the East Coast. Vecchio deals, and the pitch. Swung on, foul back. So Molinar battling there at the plate. A ball and two strikes. And that's high and inside, two and two. So you've got the other field here. In game going on, and there's a lot of cheering. So there's a lot of great plays defensively, or a lot of runs scoring, one of the two. <laughs> Becchio comes back, puts that one right down the middle, and it's fouled away. Took something off. A little off speed pitch there. Pitch is high, ball four. So a leadoff walk issued to Austin Molinar here in the third. And the leadoff batter, Kyle Mullen, now will step in. He had an infield single in the first inning and then was thrown out trying to, or on a ground ball at second base. And he'll ground that ball up the middle. So he's two for two. And so leading off the third inning here, first and second, nobody out for the White Sox as they try to mount a rally. Number four, Danny and Danny Weiner, the second baseman for the White Sox, will step in. So Vecchio had a little bit of trouble in the first inning. You remember they stranded the White Sox, a runner at third. And now they've got first and second, nobody out here in the third inning, trailing 4 nothing. Nice strike. Let's see if Vecchio can battle back here. You've got one guy in the dugout for the Diamondbacks, Robbie McAllister, number nine there. Sitting behind Dan Bailey, his coach, inside. And, you know, this time of year, a lot of these teams are decimated by kids taking vacations or other sorts of conflicts. Even the White Sox with only three on their bench here in this one. And McAllister actually will probably make his... Uh, Appearance here shortly. And that pitch has bounced to first base. Nice play by Connor Bailey. Runners advance to second and third. First out of the inning, Jacob Mullen. So Mullen will stand in with a chance to drive in a couple of runs with a base hit. And that pitch is hammered to right field and deep and gone. So Jacob Mullen will bring the White Sox to within a run with one swing of the bat. A three-run home run off Kurt Vecchio. You see his team there around the plate. And so just like that, the White Sox put three on the board. And it is a four to three ball game. So with one out, Vecchio has a clean slate to start with. That's the good news, the bad news is. The batter that just hit took him deep for three runs. 
So Vecchio now playing with a one-run lead. And the first pitch high, 1-0. and oh. So Reed Norberg, the catcher. For the White Sox, stands in. Let's see if he can start a fresh rally here in the third. High and in, 2-0. Well, that ball was out by plenty. Off the bat of Jacob Mullen. And now Vecchio seems to have lost his way, and that ball is... High, gets away from the catcher. It's 3-0. and And the 3-0 pitch, swinging away, grounds it, or lines it, I should say, into center field for a single. So they give Norberg the green light, 3-0. And he singles to center field, and Vecchio's troubles continue, and his coach, and Bailey. Well, one of the coaches, I should say, for the Diamondbacks comes out to talk to him. Dan Bailey, the head coach. So Nolan Garcia, who's now been reprieved in a sense, gave up four runs in the first, came back with a great second inning, allowed his team some time to claw their way back, and it's now a 4-3 to three game. Garcia takes that one high, 1-0. One Becchio's 1-0 pitch, high, gets away from Tanner Blake, the catcher, and over to second base goes Norbert. So Garcia now with a runner in scoring position, a chance to get himself tied up. And that pitch inside nearly hits Garcia. Two and one. And Vecchio's 2-1 pitch fouled away. Got a piece of just about everybody back there. So the World Series here at Jerebic Park always draws a big crowd. This year, no different. Garcia waits. The pitch is low, and that is ball four. So that was a full count right there. Garcia moves to first on the base on balls. Norberg stays at second. First and second, one out. And that'll bring up Brady Warren. Warren back in the second inning as he grounds this one to third. It's a fair ball. Stepping on the bag, and no, they're going to say foul. That was close. From our angle, you couldn't really tell, but it must have been right to the outside of the bag. 0-1. Oh Brady Warren flied to left field. The ball was dropped in the second, but they were able to force Garcia at second base. And that ball is drilled to left field. And the bases are loaded, so... Thomas Graff gets it in quickly for the Diamondbacks. And just like that, things unraveling here for the Diamondbacks. Bases are loaded. So a single to left field. And that'll be all for Vecchio. And into pitch now is the shortstop, number 12, Brendan Cleary and Vecchia will go over to short. So Cleary now looking to stop the bleeding here. Four to three lead for the Diamondbacks but the bases are loaded with only one out. Oh 
So a big inning thus far for the White Sox. Here in the top of the third inning, they've erupted for three. The bases are loaded. There's only one out. They've chased Kurt Vecchio. And Ryan Booth, number 12, will bat for Nick Fennell. And that's a strike. So pinch hitter here. Brendan Cleary, the new pitcher. Looking to get out of this jam. That's in there for a strike. And that 0-2 pitch on the outside corner. And down goes Ryan Booth, the second out of the inning. And do up now, Nicholas Miller. And that looks like Miller, and it is. So Miller up, bases loaded, two outs, top of the third, four, three Diamondbacks. And that pitch on the outside corner, 0-1-1. There's Vecchio, moved to shortstop. As Cleary took over for him on the mound. The 0-1 pitch, swung on and bounced up the third baseline. And actually didn't get too far up the line, bounced way foul. And the count 0-2 to Miller. And the 0-2 pitch is grounded to third base. Up with it, over to second, not in time to try the force. And the tying run will score. So McLaughlin went the easy way, but it was just too late. Norberg will score. The bases are loaded. And here's Austin Molinar, and that pitch will go back to the screen. Now batting for the White Sox. Number 10, Austin Molinar. The base is loaded. We're tied at four, top of the third. One-one, here's the pitch. Outside, nice stop by Ryan Tanner Blake, the catcher for the Diamondbacks. And that pitch hit down the line and right, it's a fair ball. One run scores, two run scores over to second base. Goes Austin Molinar, and he drives in two, and the White Sox lead six to four. So Molinar with the bases loaded, double drives in two. Brady Warren, Nolan Garcia will score. Nicholas Miller at third, and now here's Kyle Mullen. The second at bat of the inning. In fact, that was Austin Molinar's second at bat. He led off the inning with a walk. Bounced over to second, picked up there. Oh, and over to first in time. So Cleaney over to the first baseman, Connor Bailey. But a huge inning for the White Sox. They strand two, they score six. We go to the bottom of the third, and it's a White Sox up six to four. So Tanner Blake, the catcher, will lead it off. Singled and scored in the first inning. And the first pitch high and inside, 1-0. 
Danny Weiner now pitching for the White Sox. Swing and a miss on that high fastball. One and one. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on, hit into the air. Right center field and the right fielder. Austin Molinar, who's moved over to right field. He was the third baseman. Will make the play. And there's one away. And the third baseman for the Diamondbacks, Patrick McLaughlin, will step in. It's the Diamondbacks who need to mount a rally now. Each side with a big inning. The Diamondbacks four in the first, the White Sox six in the third. And we're in the bottom of the third, six, four White Sox. Pitch is low. So Garcia, you know, he settled down in the second inning, and now here, Weiner in the third. Off to a pretty good start. He's got the first batter on a fly out. The next pitch is popped up towards first base and in foul territory. Kyle Mullen makes the play, and there are two away. Two out. And Jack Cleary will come to the plate. And Cleary, first pitch swing, grounds it to second, over to first in time. So uh, that was Brady Warren who's playing second now. He was in center field, goes over to Mullen. That'll do it for the D-backs in the bottom of the third. Nice inning for Danny Weiner. We go to the fourth inning. White Sox six, Diamondbacks four. Top of the fourth inning for the White Sox. Ken Gonzalez for George Langevin Productions here. Scripps Ranch Little League. The World Series, Majors Division. And the first pitch to Danny Weiner is low and away, 0 and, or 1 and 0. On the mound, Brendan Cleary. And that pitch will bounce up there, 2 and 0. On the outside corner, two and one. Two one pitch, outside, three and one. One pitch is low and away, ball four. So a leadoff walk issued to Danny Weiner. Here in the top of the fourth inning, and that'll bring up Jacob Mullen. And last time Mullen was up, he took Vecchio out of the yard with a home run to right field. Went the other way with it. Three run shot. And that started the comeback. That started the White Sox getting on the board and the start of the comeback as they had a few batters start the rally before him and it kept going they scored three more before the inning was over and it chased Kurt Vecchio the Sun tried to make its way through the clouds here today after one o'clock
Curve ball outside, and the catcher, Tanner Blake, makes a nice stop. The next pitch, that's going to get away from Tanner, and over to second base will go Danny Weiner. So Mullen with an opportunity to get another run batted in here. On the outside corner. Three and one. And actually he's gonna look at strike three, so that was three and two, so. Cleary comes back, he strikes out Jacob Mullen. And that'll bring up Reed Norberg with a runner at second, first pitch swing, bounced up along the first baseline. And the little flick to the first baseman there, not in time. Cleary tried to make a play, and by the time he got the ball to number four, Connor Bailey it was a little late. So runners on the corners, one out, and that'll bring up Nolan Garcia. So here's Garcia. First and third, two run lead for the White Sox here in the fourth inning, it's six to four. All outside. on the outside corner. So Garcia, off the hook, he had given up four runs in the first inning. Came back with a strong second inning, was taken out, and then his team exploded for six in the third. No longer a pitcher of record here today. And Garcia will wave at that curveball. Right two. Brady Warren is scheduled on deck. And that pitch on the outside corner, strike three call. So two out, runners at first and third and That'll bring up Brady Warren. And that pitch on the outside corner, 0-1-1. So Cleary battling his way back here. He hasn't allowed a run here in the fourth inning yet. First and third. Two out. If he can get out of the inning, swing and a foul back. And he's ahead of the batter. Brady Warren, 0-2. O2 pitch has bounced over to the pitcher. Cleary to first base in time. And that'll do it for the White Sox. They don't score here in the fourth. We go to the bottom half. It's 6 4, White Sox over the Diamondbacks. Robbie, Robbie McAllister will make his appearance here in the bottom of the fourth inning, batting for Thomas Graff. 0-1 in the count. Danny Weiner still up on the hill. So let's see if McAllister can get something started here for the Diamondbacks.
Pitch is low, one and one. The one one pitch. Bounced over to third base. Long throw across the infield. In time. Ryan Booth with the play there, third baseman for the White Sox. For the Diamondbacks. Number six, Connor Babish. Connor Babish steps in for the Diamondbacks, who trail six to four. And that's going to be bounced over to third again and over to first. So nearly a mirror image of that last play is Ryan Booth throws him out. And here's Ryan Madsen now. Now batting for the Diamondbacks, number seven, Ryan Madsen. So two out, bottom of the fourth. White Sox with a six to four lead. We're at the 2009 Scripps Ranch Little League Majors World Series. Outside bounces away, one and zero. Oh. One zero pitch, low two and zero. Two zero swing and a miss, and a count two and one to Ryan Madsen. one pitch and that's hit high into the air center fielder is under it and there he is number five Nolan Garcia makes the play that'll do it for the Diamondbacks in the fourth we head to the fifth inning it's the White Sox six and the Diamondbacks four So Ryan Booth will lead things off as we come back here, top of the fifth inning. So we're getting late in this game. It's a nail-biter, 6-4 to four lead for the White Sox, and that pitch is on the outside corner, 0-1, and, and Brendan Cleary now has found his pitching groove there, so to speak, as he's just firing strikes now. 1-1. One one. Last inning, he had two strikeouts. And I believe that's three strikeouts since he entered the game. Swing and a miss. And down he goes. So one away. And here's Nicholas Miller. Miller do up. And it'll be Michael Leahy. Pinch hitting. Takes a ball. So Leahy batting for Nicholas Miller. Here in the top of the fifth inning. Swing and a miss. On deck. Scheduled to bat Austin Molinar. Swing and a miss. So the count one and two. Michael Leahy. D-backs trying to keep this one close, give themselves a chance. Or these are six inning games. Low, two and two. 
And we're here in the top of the fifth inning, so the Diamondbacks with an opportunity in the bottom of the fifth to maybe take the lead and try to hold the White Sox in the top half. But it means to be seen, and of course the Diamondbacks will still have their last at-bats if they're trailing. 2-2 pitch on the outside corner, strike three called. So Cleary now has struck out the first two batters of the fifth inning, and that's three strikeouts in the last four batters and four strikeouts out of the last six. First pitch on the inside corner for a strike, 0-1. Fouled away, 0-2. Well, that's Nathan Kuypers now, pinch hitting for Molinar outside. 1-2. and two. One two pitch is going to hit his bat. It was behind him. And that is Kuypers there. So Cleary with a chance here to strike out the side. Facing the left hand batter, Nathan Kuypers. Here's the pitch. Swung on, hit into the air towards left field, and coming up to make the catch, number nine. Robbie McAllister. So McAllister with the catch. That'll do it for the White Sox in the top of the fifth inning. We go to the bottom of the fifth. White Sox six, Diamondbacks four. Now batting for the National League champion Diamondbacks. Number four, Connor Bailey. So we're back here at Jerebic Park. Bottom of the fifth inning, Majors World Series, Scripps Ranch Little League. 6-4, White Sox with the lead over the Diamondbacks, and the Diamondbacks now batting. Connor Bailey leading it off against Danny Weiner. And the first pitch in there for a strike, 0-1. The 0-1 pitch. Bounces, one and one. The one one pitch. In the dirt, two and one. So the Diamondbacks, four in the first inning. White Sox, six in the third, and no scoring anywhere else in this game. A lot of zeros. Swung on, bounced towards shortstop, up with it over to first base in time. Jacob Mullen, and there's one away. Brendan Cleary. Now batting with one out in the bottom of the fifth inning. Diamondbacks now down, if the score remains the same here, to their last five outs. Ball in the dirt, 1-0. They trail by two. Again, the Sun trying to creep into the ball game here. Cleary grounds that one hard in the left field, so a single here with one out. And that'll bring up Kurt Vecchio, who started the game on the mound. And let's see. And there he is, number 10.
All right, so runner on first base, one out. Bottom of the fifth, and Kurt Vecchio steps in. He's the, the tying run, and he's going to get hit. So Vecchio hit by the pitch. Over to second base goes Cleary, and that'll bring up Tanner Blake, the catcher for the Diamondbacks. So here in the bottom of the fifth with one out, the Diamondbacks trying to mount a rally. Runner in scoring position. The go-ahead run is at the plate, Tanner Blake. And that pitch is low, 1-0. And, oh. and let's see now if, how Danny Weiner reacts with a couple of men on base. He's thrown a couple of good innings, the third and the fourth, with not much happening. Third inning, we're sent the side down three in a row, and the same in the fourth. So it's his first inning of trouble here in the fifth, and that pitch is hit high to the air and foul. Tanner Blake awaiting the pitch. Weiner looks in for the sign out of the windup. And that pitch is going to bounce and go to the back. Bounces towards the catcher, but the runners advance. And we have second and third with one out. So Tanner Blake now can tie the score with a hit to the outfield. That pitch on the ground and trickles away from the catcher, but not far enough. And that pitch foul back. So huge at bat here for Blake. Each side taking their time. Weiner looks in. And the pitch is low. Ball four. So the bases are loaded. And Patrick McLaughlin is due up. And so the go-ahead run is at first base here for the Diamondbacks. There's... One out in the inning, the first batter of the inning, Connor Bailey grounded to short. The next three batters have reached base. And McLaughlin now looking to do some damage here with the bases loaded, pitch low, 1-0. And the 1-0 pitch inside, and it got a piece of McLaughlin. Another hit batter, a run will score. And the Diamondbacks have pulled to within 6-5. That'll bring up Jake Cleary, and now the manager. The coach David Weiner will head out to the mound. And, you know, this is Danny Weiner's third inning of work. And let's see if he stays in. The base is loaded, one out, a run is in. Bottom of the fifth inning, 6-5. White Sox clinging to the lead, and they're going to leave him in. The Diamondbacks with a huge rally here. They're not done yet. They've scored a run. Base is loaded. Only one out.
All right. We're ready now. The pitch is low, 1-0. Now batting, number two, Jack Cleary. And Jack Cleary. Will stand in, 1-0 the count. Opportunity to put his team up with a hit to the outfield. High and tight. 2-0. Well, you couldn't ask for a better game. Six to five in favor of the White Sox, but the Diamondbacks with the bases loaded here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And a chance to go ahead and put the pressure right back on the White Sox. That pitch in there for a strike, two and one. And the 2-1 pitch on a bounce. And the count 3-1. And, and Weiner, he's got nowhere to put Cleary. Definitely doesn't want to walk here. So he's going to find himself a nice pitch here, Cleary. 3-1. and one. A walk means a tie ball game. Here's the pitch by Weiner. It's going to be bounced over to the pitcher. Goes to the plate. In time for the force. Nice job. By Weiner. So Kurt Vecchio is out at the plate. Over to third base goes Tanner Blake. McLaughlin to second. Cleary at first. So Thomas Graff now will be inserted back into the lineup. He was pinch hit for by Robbie McAllister in the last inning. And so 6-5, two outs, bottom of the fifth inning. White Sox with the lead. Bases are loaded. Huge pressure, pressure situation for Graff. Weiner's pitch is going to bounce, go to the screen. They're going to send the runner from third. The slide, he's in there. And the Diamondbacks have tied the game. Huge play. As Tanner Blake will tie it, and it's 6-6. Here in the bottom of the fifth, the go-ahead run at third as everybody moved up. So Thomas Graff with a chance to put the D-backs up and give them three outs from the championship. And that ball hit into the air. It's going to land in front of the right fielder. One run will score. Two runs will score. And the Diamondbacks have taken an 8-6 to six lead. A single by Thomas Graff to right field. He takes second on the throw. Or no, he stays there at first. He drew the throw so that the other run could score. And the Diamondbacks have broke through here. For four runs in the bottom of the fifth, they have an 8-6 to six lead. Connor Babish now batting. So a huge hit by Thomas Graff. Puts his team up 8-6. And now it's the White Sox in their final at bat. That ball is fouled down the right or left field line. So the White Sox now looking at their last at bats in the top of the sixth inning. They'll have to tie or score a minimum of two, which is the tie, of course, there, to keep this one going. So the tables have been turned. It was the Diamondbacks staring a loss in the face here, heading into the bottom of the fifth, and now they have the lead. Weiner trying to get out of the inning without any more runs. Babish at the plate, the pitch. Fouled. 
Actually, it's a foul tip into the catcher's glove. Two strikes now on Babish. Two outs. And now here comes Weiner. He a second trip here of the inning. And he's going to make a pitching change in the middle of the at-bat here. And let's see where Weiner goes, and let's see who comes in to pitch. A couple of players leaving the field. And they... Let's see, Reed Norberg for the White Sox, who was catching earlier in the game, will come into pitch. All right. So Connor Babish at the plate, two outs, bottom of the fifth inning, eight, six Diamondbacks, and they have a runner on second. And that ball has bounced hard to the third baseman, Booth up with it across the diamond in time. And the third out of the inning, but in the bottom of the fifth, the Diamondbacks will score four runs, and they take an eight to six lead. They're three outs away from the 2009 Majors World Series victory. So Kyle Mullen leads things off for the White Sox. They're down to their last three outs. They trail 8-6. Brendan Cleary still on the mound. He's been just brilliant since he came in in relief of Vecchio. Foul back. And that pitch bounced high into the air to the shortstop. Nice play. Fires across in time. Nice job, number 10. Hurt Vecchio. Third baseman was coming over McLaughlin, but Vecchio made the play. And there's one away. And Danny Weiner will come with the plate, and so the White Sox down to their last two outs. Cleary's pitch to Weiner is low, 1-0. The 1-0 on the outside corner, 1-1. One so to recap, the Diamondbacks scored four in the first inning, took a 4 nothing lead. Then in the third, the White Sox answered with six. And that ball bounced right back to Cleary. Over to first in time. And there are two away. And so the White Sox down to their final out. But as we said, the White Sox scored six in the third. They had a 6-4 lead up until the bottom of the fifth inning when the Diamondbacks erupted for four runs. They lead 8-6. The big blow, of course, the tie-breaking bases-loaded single by Thomas Graff. Ball outside, 1-0. and 1-0 pitch. And that ball is lined to the shortstop. Vecchio dives, makes the play, and that'll do it. You see the celebration. The Diamondbacks are your 2009 Scripps Ranch Little League Majors Division World Series champions as they come from behind in the bottom of the fifth and defeat the White Sox 8-6. to six. Pretty exciting game. You only had scoring in three half innings. So 8-6, the Diamondbacks come back. Both teams with a great game. Played with a lot of heart. They had some fun. Now they congratulate each other at the plate. 
So the final score, the Diamondbacks, eight, the White Sox, six. Ken Gonzalez here for George Landsman Productions. We hope you enjoyed this game. It was my pleasure and a fun time to bring it to you. And until we see you next year here at Jerebeck Park, have a great day, everyone. Congratulations to the White Sox and the Diamondbacks. What a great game and a wonderful way to end a great season. Congratulations to both teams. I'd like to uh, ask Dave Weiner, the manager of the White Sox, to come up, uh, introduce his team, and have them receive their trophies. I want to take a chance to uh, thank all the people who put all this together, the hard work that's done for Script Trans Little League. So Rob and the rest of the board, thank you. Um, I want to say thank you to the Diamondbacks. You guys played a great game today. Um, you know, we had a rivalry all year, and uh, once again, you guys got us by, by just a bit. But it was a good competitive game and great spirit, and I appreciate that. Um, let's start with uh, Jacob Mullen. Jacob, uh, our eighth kicker this year, played a lot of shortstop, first base. And uh, if there was an MVP award, it certainly would go to Jacob. Next, we got Kyle Mullen. <laughs> Kyle is uh, one of what we call our three amigos, one of the 10-year-olds on our team. So uh, you got that says a lot for a fourth grader to come out here and compete at this level. So Kyle, great job. We got Michael Leahy. Michael's a great all-around athlete, had a great year this year, and uh, uh, look forward to seeing him in the future playing baseball. Got Nolan Garcia. Yeah. Nolan, Nolan uh, would easily have been one of the top shortstops in the league uh, here this year, um, but it's tough when you draw Jacob Mullen and Danny Weiner on the same team, so he played a lot of center field. Um, also one of the three amigos and uh, fourth grader at that. Pitched great today, and uh, great job, Nolan. Good boy, Nolan. Got Nathan Kuypers. Nathan, uh, again, another great all-around athlete. Um, I saw that when we had uh, a little football game in one of our practices, and uh, I think you'll be seeing him on the football field, too. Got Austin Molinar. Austin, great all-around player, great soccer player, and here in baseball, he's only 11. So uh, you can expect next year he'll be one of the top pitchers in the league. Thank you, thank you, uh, Austin, for a great year. Uh, my personal favorite player on the team, Danny Weiner. Danny had a great season, pitching, hitting. Uh, I think his uh, batting average was uh, about 550, and his grade point average is 4.0. So, good job, Danny. Next, we got Brady Warren. Brady Warren is uh, the reason why we made it, why we made it this far. Yeah. Uh, he had the clutch hit last game and, and got us to the World Series. Thank you, Brady. Great season. Next, we have Nicholas Miller. Nicholas uh, was our Sportsmanship Award winner, and nobody would be surprised uh, uh, to hear that. And uh, he he wore his traditional White Sox hat to the uh, to the sportsmanship ceremony. I think that says a lot about him. Next, we have Nick Fennell. Nick came a long way this season, worked really hard. And uh, Nick, he did a fantastic job, great spirit. Yeah. Got Ryan Booth. Ryan Booth, the big guy on the team, the man amongst boys. Uh, hit a grand slam home run. I think that was his first home run this year. And uh, again, had a great season and a great game today at third base. Okay, next we got the third of the three amigos, uh, Reed Norbert. Yeah, Reed. 
Reed, also a fourth grader, uh, also a clutch hit in our last game to get us here. He scored the winning run, and Reed uh, got his first home run this year. So again, uh, you know, great job, Reed, and to the whole team. I want to thank the coaches as well, Chuck Norberg, thank you. and Jeff Booth, and all all the parents that uh, were involved in our team. Thank you. Well, thanks very much, Dave. Uh, now I would like to introduce the manager of the Majors Division World Series champion Diamondbacks, Dan Bailey. Hey, how about another round of applause to both teams? That was a hard-fought battle on this side. Great job, boys. Hey, uh, do me a favor. One of us take home the TOC crown, okay? You guys, good luck in the TOC. Hats off to all of you guys, Dave, Chuck, Jeff, great, great game. Um, yeah, it could have gone any way. We, we've been behind, I think, in the sixth inning most of our games. And uh, we, we uh, just seem to always battle back. So good job, boys. So I'd like to thank my coaches, uh, Robert McLaughlin. Thank you. And Dusty Matson. Tanner Blake, our fearless catcher. Good job, bud. Job. Brandon Cleary. Does that help, Bells? Brandon? Hey, uh, yeah, you got to get a haircut if I remember. That, that was a deal. So, so I'm going so. to the haircut place right now. Thank you. <laughs> Thomas Graff, yeah, huge hit today, bud. Good job. Patrick McLaughlin. Good job, bud. <laughs> and I guess the fourth amigo, another 10-year-old that stepped up all, all year for us, Jack Cleary. Those four can be on the same team someday. It's going to be a force. Connor Bailey, way to hit today, bud. Ryan Matson. Connor Babish. Good pitching in there, bud. <laughs> and Robbie McAllister. And someone that couldn't be here today, Nicholas Brunetto, was at his grandmother's 80th birthday today, so I'm sure he sent us well wishes from afar. Thank you again, the league, parents, White Sox. Thank you. Great season. Oh, I already called Dusty Hit. Dusty Johnson. I already called you. Yeah. <laughs> hey! Hey! Again, thanks, everybody. Well, thanks again, everyone. It's been a great, another great season in Scripps Ranch Little League. Thanks to everybody for all your support all year. And let's uh, one more final round of applause for just a great, well-played game and two great teams.